Yep, the Witch Hunter. That's the underrated unit this time, folks. It's not really an underrated unit so much as it is an underrated hero, but yeah, Witch Hunter's here. He's got Balthazar at his side. We're up against Tomb Kings, so you know that means we're looking for some rust action. And I brought all the pistols I can. Four Pistoliers, four Free Company Militia on foot. Got the Sigmar Sons, Tatter Souls, with a Warrior Priest juicing him up along with some spears, a couple Empire Knights, and the Hammer of Witches. Up against the Tomb Kings, we've got, I believe this is uh, Kalita, interesting choice, and a Light Mage, two Bone Giants, very strong, a Scorpion as well. I haven't seen Scorpions actually in a while, so that's, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say it's nice because I just hate them so much, but anyway, um, uh, that's a story for another time. Uh, Eyes of the Desert, also just a great pick in general, so yeah, we're going to get this skirmish underway. Skeletons, obviously, it's a couple Tomb Guard, I think I mentioned, I don't know. Been a long day, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the witch hunter here. Obviously, the main thing you bring him for is the accusation debuff. He is a, a quote unquote like assassin type character, right? Archetypes, and he this debuff, melee defense, armor, and missile resistance in particular synergizes super well with Balthazar and going for uh, shooting type builds. Obviously, with pistoliers and with uh, the free company. We can take advantage of that high volume non-armor piercing fire with minus 90 armor in total between Overcast, Plague of Rust, and the Witch Hunter. Not to mention on a character too, specifically removing that missile resistance is very important uh, to do dealing that full damage. You can all use, also use it in a melee context, obviously, to like help Demogriff Knights if I had some to uh, charge in somewhere. Like here, I could use it on the Tomb Scorpion and actually fight with the Empire Knights in melee, they do okay against the Tomb Scorpion, but here we go. Overcast Plague of Rust on High Queen Kalita. Pistolier is pulling up danger close, taking shots from the Bone Giants, but I mean, that's just... If you're in my Pistol core, you, you gotta expect this sort of thing to happen. It, there will be attrition. <laughs> your your safety is not guaranteed by any means, but uh, Skeletons pushing forward now. Empire Knights are kind of able to break up this assault on this side a little bit and keep that Tomb Scorpion, more importantly, tied down for the time being. All the while, the Hammer of Witch is going to be plinking away at these uh, Bone Giants. Nice net of Amantok here, though. Overcast net going to catch uh, all the remaining Pistoliers here. Oh, man, Kalita's still getting blasted, though, as that Overcast Plague of Rust was still active. She just took a ton of damage in the face right there. Witch Hunter, all the meanwhile, is kind of uh, helping. I actually miscasted that uh, accusation on those Skeleton Warriors there. Meant to put it on the Tomb Scorpion. But, hey, we've got plenty more where that came from. Balthazar also kind of pulling back at the moment. I've got to keep him safe from Bone Giants. But here, basically missed... Um, you, you can imagine, though, that... The priest shouted some prayers. Oh, no, here he, here he comes. He's about to shout the prayers right now. I was going to say, I don't think I missed it. But this engagement's just been kind of underway here. In terms of infantry, now here come the faith buffs. This is when things start to turn around. Oh yeah. And all of a sudden, like these uh, spearmen and even the free company and so on will be trading decently into the tomb guard. We've got some uh, overwatch fire here on the side as well from the free company doing quite nicely. Uh, let's see, overcast plague of rust. Yep, on that tomb scorpion there. Down to only 30 armor. So these free company blasting up close will do a lot. And again, the, the charges from the Empire Knights, non-armor piercing damage, even the Spearmen just fighting in melee uh, will be aided by Balthazar's magic. Oh man, Witch Hunter's having a rough time. He's getting blasted now by various things, but uh, hey, you know, he can continue to provide his debuff as much as possible. We've still got Pistoliers operating in the back line as well, just harassing and keeping these troops you know, from being able to operate with full impunity. But uh, oh man, Witch Hunter getting pretty blasted there. Not sure. I think the debuff is on cooldown still. I want to say we're going to be throwing it. Uh, we'll kind of watch watch the unit cards here to see where it goes. Oh man, that, that is a desert doing a lot of damage to him right there. All it takes though really is one uh, one good use of his debuff. I want to say I know it was at some point here soon. Uh, yeah, I think it's actually yeah it's on the uh, <laughs> on the tomb scorpion there. You can see down to 60 armor, and only nine melee defense. Unfortunately, the Witch Hunter does get broken there, but uh, the support here, Empire Knights, various other units, trying to finish off the Scorpion, doing quite well at it. And uh, all likewise, these Eyes of the Desert, I think they're going to pursue, probably try and maybe chase the Witch Hunter off, I'm not 100% sure, but pulling back my free company to kind of form a sideline here, 
We're going to punch the knights up and just continue to disrupt this pocket as we have been this whole time. Kind of ping-ponging ping in and out, cycle charging, so to speak. Um, as as is necessary to keep these free companies secure. And there it goes. Another overcast plague of rust. Uh, will the witch hunter come back? We'll see. We didn't get to see the minus 90 on armor. Uh, my, yeah, on, on a single target here. Which I apologize about. But it, it's almost better sometimes to kind of spread it around so you can get more uptime, right? There's certainly an argument to be made there. Uh, more buffs being, being tossed here. Cleta has to pull back, and the Tomb Guard are just not trading super cost-effectively against these state troops. And granted, the Tattersouls and the, the Sigmar Sons obviously will be good targets for them to go after, but even still, Sigmar Sons and Tattersouls trading very nicely with the Faith buffs active. And uh, yeah, you can see that the Transmutation of Vlad active there, debuffing the melee stats. I haven't really been using that too much, but at this point I've got plenty of Winds of Magic left, and Balthazar is almost dead, so I want to try and use it if I can. Here comes the Witch Hunter. He's not done yet. He's still got one accusation left in him. Lita. Probably going to go down here to Pistoliers. We'll see. Well, uh, might actually not get in range to get that, uh, get that thing off. Maybe. We'll see. Big old Death Blob forming up here. You can see I'm pulling my Free Company back as well. Still got these Pistoliers firing, being annoying. Both the Bone Giants are still firing, though. And uh, as is the Hammer of Witches. So just a lot of stuff on both sides. Nasty Soul Fire comes in here. And that's going to be critical army losses. So yeah, unfortunately didn't get to throw that last accusation in there. But hey, it is what it is. You know, supporting leadership of that pocket. Throwing the accusation debuff. It, uh, if you would have, um, if you can imagine, if it would have been on the Scorpion, you know, that engagement would have gone even better for me, right? Um, but just in general, he kind of plinks away at infantry. Um, he, he has magic damage, so in, in key situations, if you need that, can be quite useful as well. Um, and yeah, really, the, the accusation is what you bring him for. And something like this, I've showed off before, and I will show off again in the future, I'm sure, because it, it's a lot of fun, certainly. This uh, kind of rust synergy with the Witch Hunter and all these pistols, you can get a lot of work done against those armored units that you should be able to. And uh, yeah, um... Speaking of other things about the Witch Hunter, he does have a couple of other items and abilities. Nothing really to write home about. Um, but I do want to just mention briefly. Uh, Opal Amulet, if you feel you have some extra points and want him to be a little bit tankier, that definitely can be helpful. Uh, Skull of Katam, reduced power recharge rate is okay. In certain situations, generally would say this isn't the most useful item in the world, but like maybe against vampire counts. I don't know, it's not really, it's not, oh, what is the one that the Lizardmen have? It's going to bother me, I'm, I have to check it, I apologize. It's the one that the Skink Priest has. This is a much better item, I think. Uh, this one, Cube of Darkness, that's right. Yeah, see, it's a greatly reduced power recharge rate. Granted, it doesn't last nearly as long, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is really going to be super useful. Again, if you have the points and you want to take it against, like, Vampire Counts or Coast or Lizardmen or anyone who you think is going to be... <clears throat> bringing a, a high tier caster maybe might be might be worth it big maybe but really again it's just the accusation you're looking for and whether that be synergizing with knights or ranged units of various types or your infantry or whatever it's it's effective certainly could even run something like a boris on a pegasus actually has really strong stats um, for in terms of attack and defense just a great duelist in general especially once you factor in his kind of buffs and debuffs and everything. Problem is, it doesn't have the best armor piercing damage in the world. I mean, it's pretty good, but... Then you come in here with the Witch Hunter, and not only will you be further debuffing your opponent's melee defense for that engagement, likewise their armor as well. Um, if you're supporting with missile units, and obviously their missile resistance gets debuffed, but... Just in general, I would say the Witch Hunter is a really nice support tool, and I am a big, big believer in that you should always, when you're playing as the Empire, have all of your hero slots filled. Um, like, whether you take a Witch Hunter, Warrior Priest, Captain, whatever, they're all good in their own ways, and you can even build really cool, unique builds around them, certainly, like with the Witch Hunter. And obviously you guys see the Warrior Priest on my channel all the time, so he, I wouldn't say he's underrated, but the Witch Hunter definitely, I think, is pretty underrated. You used to see him a lot more. An accusation was direct damage, but I honestly think now in some ways it's it's better because you can 
synergize it with more units, right? So anyway, I've probably rambled on long enough about Witch Hunters on this one, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.